I had a guy one time that told me to just meet up with me and see me in person. I'm not talking about any sexuality or any nothing. He would give me $8,000. And I was like, what? Like, are you serious? I mean, are you guys having lunch? And or is he just I, like... I didn't know till I started talking to him and realizing. And again, I saw how much he sent me in the that month of being like, an online slave. Yeah. I realized that this is not a joke. He's serious about it because he sent me almost half of it online already, you mm -hmm. know? So, of course, he would give me that amount to see me in real life. And um, it was um, a pretty interesting story because he grew up in a really Jewish community as well and mm. he followed me and he loved my story. So I think a lot of slaves um, relate to their queen or dominatrix, whatever you want to name it, because of their life story, because of their lo her look. Some of them would like a girl that looks the opposite, like mm -hmm. like skin color or like hair color, and some of them would like someone who that is from the exact same community. Mm -hmm. So that specific slave grew up um, Hasidic Jew and he was a virgin and he was 42 and he never had sex before. He was a full virgin. Wow. He met me, he loved my story. He thought I'm so brave and he wanted to just see me like, mm -hmm. and you know, I went with Nick and I felt really safe and uh, I was in New York and it was okay. It wasn't scary. We met in public. Um, he was shaking when he saw me. He was so excited, mm -hmm. but he was my my fan. He wasn't like a weirdo. He didn't try to like, but you know, it's really scary because sometimes you could be a serial killer that would try yeah. to like kidnap you and put you in some yeah, you just basement. Don't know. So you gotta you gotta be careful in that type of industry. That's for sure. So did you guys just like meet in a park? Like, where'd you meet? <laughs> we met in Brooklyn, which is where he's from. He's uh -huh. very religious. Um, we met right next to it wasn't a Starbucks. I think it was a coffee bean. It was like a coffee store. And he was so excited to see me. He wanted me He wanted me to go drink something. So he asked me if I want to grab a drink. And I wanted to like, I kind of pretended myself to be a queen and to be a bitch and be uh -huh. mean to him. So I'm like, yeah, go grab me a drink. Like, I'll wait here with my heels on. I was wearing like all, all latex. Yeah. It was kind of funny to see the situation. He came back with a drink and he was so excited to see me that he was like holding it and it spilled all over the floor in the street. Aww. It was the daylight. It was like 2 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Like in a really, you know, busy area in Brooklyn. I'm not mm -hmm. going to say exactly where because that's where yeah, he's yeah. from. But really religious Jewish area. Um, and again, he wore a hat. He wore sunglasses. And he just left the community. So he already shaved his hair. And he did all the stuff to not make him look super Jewish, but mm -hmm. super Hasidic. But he still spoke Hebrew. We actually spoke in Hebrew most of the time. So there's crazy stories like this of people that are just like your real fans and they would pay any amount of money just to meet up with you. So how long and, did you spend with him? Um, I was with him for like 45 minutes to an hour. And were you just standing there talking or no. did you like guys go get? We, I felt comfortable with him. We got more safe with each other uh -huh. and he offered me to drive me back to my hotel. Uh -huh. The fact that he spoke Hebrew and he's from the same community. I know it sounds stupid of me that I did it, but I felt really safe. I felt like he's just Nick, a nerdy Nick guy. Nick was with you? Yeah, Nick was with me in New York, but he didn't come to the meeting. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So I came into the car with him. He drove me to my hotel, and the whole ride while he's driving, he was touching my feet, like massaging it, smelling it, sniffing it, licking it. I have it on video. I posted it on my OnlyFans, and OnlyFans took it down because you're not allowed to take a video in public while driving. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. why I have Fansly now, because I have a lot of pee content when I pee on stuff because they love it and OnlyFans doesn't allow pee. No, they don't. So I kind of hate them for that because yeah. it's annoying me because Here. I need it. Guys, so. if you want the pee content, you got to go to Fansly. I'm there Just for saying. loyal fans. Yeah. <laughs> so I have the pee stuff on loyal fans and Fansly. But yeah, wow. so he drove me back to my hotel back from Brooklyn all the way to Upper West Side Manhattan and it was really safe. He just sniffed my feet the whole drive and he paid me that crazy amount of money. Wow. Do you still talk to him? I still talk to him here and there. Yeah. yeah. Did he, he did it kind of drop off a little bit after that meeting? Do you think it was yeah. like a crescendo for yeah, him? He just and, wanted to see me. Yeah. He just wanted to meet me. I thought he was gonna be a regular slave. I was really disappointed. Mm. I'm sure he's gonna he follows me so much that I'm sure he will see his this podcast. Mm -hmm. But I think that he didn't have that amount of money to give me every month. He just really wanted to see me at one yeah. time and smell me. Like <laughs> smell my feet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he sniffed it. Like I have that video. It's literally on my phone, on my <laughs> you know, my folder with all of my other videos. He took my feet. Let's just say that's the feet. And he like, like cocaine. Like I've, I have that video when I posted it. The comments I got are insane. It got viral. Like he was so obsessed with my feet. I've never seen someone so obsessed with something. So before. he basically like, paid $8,000 to smell your feet. Smell my feet, see me, touch me, um, look at me in person, see me with no filters, no Photoshop, just 
touch me, <laughs> see me. <Wow. laughs> crazy. Yeah. Oh my God. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.